Hey everybody, it's Charlie and Nathan from Daily Motor. Welcome to the live drive of the 2022 Hyundai Palisade. This is the calligraphy model, meaning it's top spec. It's got all the bells and whistles that Hyundai offers with the Palisade. So for the next hour or so, we're gonna spend time going around the car, taking a look at the ins and outs, taking it for a drive and answering your questions on what you'd like to know and see with Hyundai's three row SUV. We got Alyssa behind the camera right now and we'll be getting to your chats here in just a few minutes. So if you got anything that you'd like to say, even if it's just a hello, let us know in the chat and we'll get to you. Palisade came out a few years ago along with its corporate cousin, the Kia Telluride. But what I like to say is the Telluride is kind of like the Walmart Range Rover and the Palisade's kind of like the Walmart Mercedes. So they're kind of two different approaches to sort of luxury-ish sort of vehicle, but I, I don't think that the Palisade looks quite as conventional and in my opinion, quite as good as the Telluride, but I would rather have the Palisade and I'll kind of let you know over the time we're in the car why that is. What about you, Nathan? What do you, which one do you prefer? I prefer the Telluride because of the looks and um, yeah, the front end is just a little bit weird in my opinion it's cool but it i just like the more conventional look of the palisade yeah it kind of looks like a big hamster i'm more of a fan of range rovers than yeah mercedes anyway how about you Liz? what do you think of the looks i really don't mind them yeah it's very futuristic they're very much trying to go in a different route than any other suvs look right now i think and i think that's also part of hyundai's re branding of themselves. Yeah. Hyundai and Kia are very much trying to change the social perspective of their brands. Right. And I think they're doing a great job of it. Not only too. with how their cars drive nowadays, but also how they look. Yeah. Yeah, they do a really good job. You can see these big old beautiful wheels that we've already gotten pretty muddy because I did push this thing off-road a little bit earlier while filming. Took the Walmart Mercedes off-road. I sure did. This is kind of neat. This is uh perspective i don't know if that does the blinkers let's see yeah it does that's cool did you see this nathan i i think that is i neat. didn't see that yeah that's, that's pretty neat. much what i'm talking about i mean who else makes a Fun light that looks like that. like that yeah you know it's just the subtle things that are adding up i think one thing i don't like is how little sidewall there is in these tires. little sidewall yeah says. it's definitely the the more luxurious cars get these big old wheels with smaller sidewalls. And I get the I'm looks, but that. it's like, you want to come to your ride, one, people don't realize how much tires absorb yeah. road bumps. I know, I, I wish we would get over this trend. It was the way with our Tesla. All the Tesla's wheels are so large and the sidewall is so thin. We ended up going down a size in wheels so that we could get a little bit more sidewall. And it did improve the overall ride of the car. They want the rubber bands. Yeah, they really yeah. do want the rubber bands. Please. That's kind of a neat style thing, yeah. Huh. I wonder sort of like if it's rear also. DRLs. I wonder if it's also functional because wait, is this? It's oh, lit up. This is a light here. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Wow. So I wonder if it Back actually here. reflects the other light if you a lot know, more. You, you, it would just look like it's reflecting off of the tail light. Yeah, it's a very subtle light. I bet at night it looks cool. Yeah. Got your power open uh, tailgate right up fairly low load surface i kind of like that because if you're talking soccer moms or something they need to be able to lift strollers in here and a very sizable oh, underfloor uh, compartment which i think is really smart oh, I love because that. with three row vehicles you're a little limited on how much space you get back here so the fact that you could put jumper cables blankets uh diaper bag or something First under there kit. yeah uh reusable grocery bags a lot of those sort of things and then just close this I'd put the milk gallons under there. Yeah. The only thing that's kind of interesting I just noticed. Hmm. So for the third row, you can you have a button to fold it. Now for the second row, you also have a button to fold it. Oh. But for the third row, which I, I can't really, I'm trying to think which would be better. Because the third row, you'd think you could just, it'd be easier to have a handle mm -hmm. just to just pull up. Um, but instead they put a button and then the second row you'd have to go all the way around. Right. Yeah, it's full power for the third row, but it's just a mechanical release for the second the row. The navigator is also like that, I remember. Yeah, I think it must have something to do with the engineering constraints that a lot of brands choose to do it that oh, way. Oh, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. So, for those captain chairs then, mm -hmm. are they still released or is there another button that you have to press? 
Well, once it, you go to the front, it's a little finicky because, like, you'll see once these go down, they, they take their sweet time. If I fold that right one, it doesn't quite go all the way. Well, <laughs> you have that's to come back up here. And, it in theory would. But I'm it, asking actually when you t put it back up. So now that Nathan has put it back down, yeah. all the way down, it's stuck that way. Right. So yeah. you have to press a lever. Yes. But without having folded it all the way down, would could it- Could you get it back up? Could you get it back up without having to pull another lever? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Okay. It yeah. just, it, would, it falls anyway. Yep. Okay. Um, it, I guess the reason why it would make more sense is because it's, it would be more difficult to come back here and lift it from here, or is this, it's just a- Right. It's right there. Yep. And you can slide those ones forward and backward, which is which you can't necessarily do with these powered ones. I see. Yeah. That captain chair goes back very far. Yeah, it oh, does. Wow. Very cool. All right, let's all hop in. We'll get some of your chats and test out the third up. row. Yeah, yeah. So there's a few different ways you can do it. You can do it that way, and then you can also just press this little button, and the whole chair kind of just cool. slingshots forward. Decent bit of room back here. Let me see if I can put this up. Oh, actually, it's a little tough. The whole car is gonna be <laughs> there we go. So it's five foot ten. I got some knee room, although it's it's a bit tight. Um, now Alyssa and I actually spent time in a telly ride. We had this whole uh, whole telly or palisade filled up. We had uh, six or seven people in it. Yeah. So that was um, and it worked. Two years ago. Yeah, it worked nicely. It was a good vehicle for that. Right. These you can also power recline, which is interesting. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, get a little bit more comfortable. You got a USB-A port back here and a few cup holders. And I think this is kind of important for kids back here is having a, an air vent to keep them cool right above them. Yep. You guys want to get in? Sure. Sure. Which thing? Oh, here. <laughs> Would you be able to reach up and turn the blinkers off? Sure. You can see up here in the second row, there is a wall style outlet. Although I'm kind of disappointed, it's only 150 watts. There's not a ton of things you can power with that. And then you have a 12 volt heated and ventilated seats back here. And the buttons feel really nice. Climate control. They're like rubber. Huh. And they have a really nice feel to them. Neat. What do we got in the chat, Liz? William Long says, hey, DM gang, first one in today. Hello, William. Jason Lee says, one of Korean viewer um, was waiting for your video don't know what that means okay and mukisa says hello as well hello 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 and we are all set all right so instead of doing a full panoramic sunroof they kind of did one normal front roof and then a rear sunroof this one does not look like it opens looks like it's just a a, a closed you know static one what do you mean like the the window itself doesn't open at all yeah the glass doesn't move Yep. Which is fine. You don't need your kids throwing stuff out of there. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, that's a decent place to be. You guys seem Quite comfortable. Nice. You got your little flip down armrests and yeah, nice center place. You can see we got our camera bag in there, but you can also do a diaper bag or a little cooler or mm -hmm. different things for that. There are USB-A ports right here uh, yeah. on both sides. Power things out. And it's everything looks pretty good. This is the calligraphy model. So you see you get this quilted leather even in the third row and It doesn't feel quite as premium as something like a BMW or a Mercedes But it's solid and and it's and it's visually appealing and the headliner super soft. I really like the material It's yeah, kind of like a squishy. Yeah, a squishy Alcantara feel. Oh, that is nice. Yep. Yeah All right. well, That's pretty all right. Well, Liz you want to let us out here and then you and I can sure. go to the front Now, is there a way, I think there is right here, for my, me to release to myself. Yep, all right, just like ah. that. Yeah. Actually, look, point this out. Okay. That when the armrest is down. Um, well, I think, I think it, it's it, not that much of a big deal. Yeah, it's made to just kind of free you that way. <laughs> yep, and you do have some windscreen sh shades as well, or side shades for keeping the kids the sun off their eyes. A Palisade only comes in one powertrain. It's a 3.8 liter V6, naturally aspirated, and it works pretty darn well for this car. It makes a good amount of power. It's an eight-speed automatic transmission. This one is all-wheel drive. It it never feels like it has to work too hard, and I appreciate that. 
but very attractive front up here very intuitive and easy to use center stack too you've got all your standard kind of hyundai Kia layouts there for map and nav and everything and then HVAC super easy look at all the knobs there's a knob for volume a knob for tuning knobs for the dual zone climate knobs for the drive modes very straight just nothing stupid no weird sort of touch controls no just just like all easy to lay out some people might not super care for the buttons to shift the car but you can't really get much easier than just going drive I really like that park neutral like you know i really like that yeah yeah the maverick has a rotary um shifter shifter and i've never had a car that had that before and i like it so much because i don't have to look at it it's so easy so i feel like the buttons could be very similar to that right and they do put a little bit of a, a what do you want to call this a, a knob nub on the d so that kind of feels you can differentiate by yeah. here. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Not like blind people would be able to use that, but. <laughs> but it's just so that you can reach down and be like, all right, this is drive without putting your looking down at yep. it. The only thing that is kind of quirky up here are these cup holders that quite violently come out. Switchblade out. Yeah, and it probably hurt. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, that's got some kick to it. So your kids will probably do that and end up hurting themselves. Well, then hopefully they learn not to do that again. Yeah, but kids are idiots. Well, it's like me when I stuck my finger in the cigarette lighter in my dad's F-150. Right. Never did it again. This is also a really nice feature, this under console storage area. You can see that's a medium sized purse, small to medium size, and it fits down there nicely. I love that. Very much out of the way. I love that so much. All right, well, let's turn this live sit into a live drive, shall we? got ourselves a head-up display nice and simple 12 speaker Harman Kardon audio system we'll be testing that tomorrow drives so smooth. yeah I really like the throttle calibration in this car in comfort mode it just kind of eases on slowly takes off Jason H says great video oh thank you Jason H and Jason Lee is asking if it's the calligraphy or the limited edition. It is calligraphy, correct? Yes. Great. And William Long asks if Hyundai offers a console of some sort to go between the captain's chairs, saying that's a nice addition. But then he says, um, actually, it's probably too skinny of a space for that. Yeah, I don't think they offer anything particular for that spot. Yeah. Also, could... there's a hump in the floor. Yeah. So. Well, if you get there's. Isn't there one model you can get where it's like a thing in the middle and... There might be one with a like a bench seat, but I don't think there's one that you can get with like a center console. Huh, I thought there was. I think if there were, it'd be this one because it's the top trim. I really feel like testing the 3.8 liter out right now. Although we probably could have made that gap right there. It's always so difficult with this stretch because of the right hand turn. Yeah. Turn lane. Um, I always get worried that people are going to change their mind at the last minute and smoke me. I want to point out, Ford's got some cool colors right now. Bronco Sport just went by us, and I think that's called uh, Cayenne Red Tint Coat or something. Or it's it's some kind of orangish red looking color, and it's, it's it's just got a lot of cool. They got the Area 51, which we have our Maverick in. They've got Cactus Gray, which is kind of this like brownish greenish color. And they've got, um, what's the color? Slate, I think is the color we had the, the F-150 in. And then they have that red, they have Alto Blue, which is super, super dark. Alto. Yeah. That's very interesting. So, we're going forward right now with the, the different paint schemes they got. Oh, and they have a Eruption Green, mm. like a dark green color going on the new Broncos. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All those uh, art degrees. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> working, doing something. Doing something. So Jason Lee is asking for a comparison between the seats with a ha uh, Honda Pilot, wanting to know which one is more comfy. Oh, I haven't really spent enough time in either vehicle to give you a, a really accurate call on that. I think they're both going to be pretty similar. I do like that these seats have a depth adjustment, thigh depth, and length, uh, if you will. Mm -hmm. So for taller drivers, like you can sort of extend it and really get yourself comfortable. This is probably going to be a little bit more comfortable than a Pilot. There's nothing wrong with the Pilot, but Hondas just tend to be a tinge more bare bones. 
Interesting. Yeah. But the, I've, I've spent a lot of time in a ridge line and that was plenty comfortable. So. Interesting. Yeah, but I, I think this would just be a hair, a hair more so. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. I also feel like eight speeds is the perfect amount of gears for a car. Because every eight speed that I drive is good, whether it's the one in the, in the Fords, the one in the BMWs, the one in the uh, Chryslers, the one in this. But Ford has an eight speed. The Maverick. Oh, really? Yep, and the Bronco Sport. Oh. Yep. Yeah, and it's it's just always good and smooth. It's it's like you, you have enough that it can have a few overdrive gears, but it doesn't need to hunt quite as much as the 10 speed does. Sweet. Yeah. Lukisa is asking how the road noise is, and Nathan, we'd like to hear your opinion back there too. Um, it's a little bit, um, not really rough, but I feel like I can kind of like every now and then, like, um, road undulations kind of bump me around a bit. Mm -hmm. You can definitely hear a little bit of tire noise. Yeah, I think it's pretty moderate, kind of par for the course. Um, well, it's probably different in the front, too. I'd be curious to try that. Yeah. Let's look at some of these Bronco colors. So that, I don't know what the name of that gray one is. But they've got that cool yellow, which they technically call orange, even though it's very clearly <laughs> That's yellow. so yellow. That red's fairly generic, but then that darkish blue, that's um, Area 51. And then look at the eruption greens back there. Look at all the yellow ones. Yeah, these green ones. Yeah. That's a great green. I mm -hmm. love that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Man, all these neat colors, and I think I'd buy black. That black Bronco does look It good. just looks so Yeah. I'd get green. I want to own a green car someday. Yeah. The white looks really clean, too. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that white one with steelies. That's a kind of a basic wow, one. Yeah. Soft wow. top. That's cool. Yeah. Someone ordered that. Oh, look. It's a little Fiat 500E. Or, uh, <laughs> smart no, smart, smart, smart car. Electric smart car. Wow. That's a smart E. Smart E. <laughs> smart E. That's yeah. adorable. Huh. Yeah, those are some great colors. All these Broncos locked in jail waiting for their chips. How do they, I, it's such an engineering question, but how do they put the chips in after the entire thing is built? We don't know which chip they're waiting on. It could be something as simple as like a seat controller or something like that. Gotcha. that like they, they're just waiting on. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Dawson Jensen is asking how our day was. Um, overall pretty decent. Got some work done. I got the day drive shot on this and the start of the sound test. We also said goodbye to the Jetta GLI today. Um, it's fine. It's a little dreary. It is rainy today and I hope it comes up on camera, but it is very foggy today and it's really kind of cool. Right. Yeah. How was your day, Nathan? Uh, it was pretty good. I, um, went through a house today, inspected it and opened up the, the door to the garage and saw a, it was like a, it was a, Nissan. a well there's a motorcycle and then there's a Nissan 300ZX or something. Oh, like an older one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I can't remember the motorcycle, it was like a Suzuki Crotch truck that looked, that looked really high end. Yeah, it was a Gixxer. Um, That's cool. He had photos of, of it inside too. Um, <laughs> Cute. Then I went and got the fluids changed in my new Explorer. Yeah, Nathan got a new car, 2002 Ford Explorer, very clean. Um, and then, and then also got new tires for it. All in all, spent nine hundred dollars on it today. Nice, nice little vehicle, vehicle spa day. Yep. Yeah. How about I paid twenty eight hundred for it. <clears throat> How about you, Liz? I had a great day. Sorry, interrupt. Like that some, is something. Yeah. Oh, oh it's huh. a pallet. Eesh, that's bad. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Went off topic. Around the road once and came up to a bunch of debris in the road and some stopped traffic. And this Audi, it was an S7, um, hit a pallet and blew a tire Oof. that had fallen off of a, um, a truck. Felt so bad for him. I just mm. stopped and got out and helped him to clean up the pallet and stuff. Oh, that was Offered awesome. my assistance. So Gager66 is in the chat, hey, Gagers. I remember, nice. asking how the ambient lighting is. Uh, yeah. Sounds like it's always a sucker for that. I don't think it's too great in this car. Let me see. That would be vehicle, lights, ambient light, brightness, max, and let's do 
some sort of purple. Where should it be? It's gonna be hard to tell because. Uh, are your lights on? I think I see it. I hope it yeah, comes up. Oh, yeah, it. you guys can definitely see it. Okay, so it's in the door. Yeah, it's all about here, too. So it's not quite like Mercedes levels where it blinds you even in the middle of the day, but it's it's neat. You can choose from uh, all sorts of different colors, which is good. You got a whole color wheel right here. You can, you oh, can scroll great. around too. That's good. Yeah. Oh. That's really cool. My only complaint is all the buttons they had, they couldn't have made one for the ambient lighting. I saw how many clicks it took for you to get in there. Yeah, it would be nice if you and could I have just shortcut to it. It's just a button right, that you press with your finger. What, do you remember what cars those are that does that? No? Okay. Me? That's not a problem. Anyone? Oh, yeah. Um, oh. 2013 Ford Focus. Right, but the difference is with the like those older Fords is it only had like six colors to choose from. Whereas no, this has no. like... Or even if it was ten colors it to choose from. It's remember, not an entire color wheel like this, you know? If I remember correctly, the first gen... Or no, it was the mid 2000s Mustangs GT. You could change the color in the gauge clusters. There's like a hundred different colors. Right, but you had to go into the gauge cluster to do that. You just tap the button. How could you scroll through a hundred different colors with just tapping a button? It was a pain. But <laughs> it well, I know I know some of the cars that have simpler, like the Mini that we have, that yeah. the SE, you just press the button and you can scroll through, but it only had like six different colors on it. Got it. Gagers, you sparked some pretty intense conversation. <laughs> Joshua Thomas says, hey Charlie, big fan of your videos. Would you be able to do sound of the Audi A8 with the top trim B&O system? I will try. Audis are a bit hard to get, but leave the comments in the videos and ask for it because then I can take those comments and kind of show them to Audi and be like, look, people are asking. Right. Yeah, Audi doesn't keep a huge press fleet here in Detroit, but um, I'll try. Great. Andreas Kamp says, good to be here. Your production quality is top notch. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like uh, Hotspot's holding up well today, so that's good. Should be pretty decent with that. Yeah. He also says, my 2011 Fiesta has ambient lighting. Right. Yeah, yeah. Ford, Ford was good to get on that kind of early. Now I feel like Ford's kind of behind the game a little bit with ambient lighting, but mm. like a lot of things, they were kind of up ahead of the game for a while. Nathan Salazar says, uh, or asks, if the 2022 Honda Civic is a good daily driver. Yes. Yes. One of the best daily drivers on the market. Yeah. I mean, you guys, I don't know if you've noticed at all, but maybe that's the point. Every, I've been able to drive so smoothly with, with like, just kind of driving around because there's no jumpiness to the throttle. We've got a Kia K5 this week as well, and Nathan pointed out, like, there's, the, this throttle's not very smooth. You kind of lean into it, and then it sort of jerks you after a second. This, in comfort mode, I mean, it's just so smooth. Even when it has to shift, it's mm. a very pleasant place to be. And the ride is taking these bumps pretty well. We're going to go over a pretty rough section here and kind of just see it's it's solid. There's no rattles in here. I really like the way that this rides. Yeah. I do agree that it'd be a little bit smoother with some, some thicker sidewall tires, but all things considered, it's not bad. It was a big old puddle. $50 donation will make Nathan stand there and then drive through. <laughs> um, a little contradiction to your not rattling, the third row is rattling a little back in Is here. it? Yeah. Huh, I Every guess they just don't now. care about the rear third row kids. Because you can just take the passenger talk feature and go, hey kids, hey kids, shut up back there. No one cares about your rattles. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, there's a microphone up here, and it's actually amplifying my voice back there into uh, into Nathan's ears and into the third row speakers. Yeah. It's called passenger talk. Right, and we've actually used that before in the past because when we did have a Palisade fully loaded with adults, it was easier because I could just kind of talk at a normal volume like this without having to sort of yell as we're on the highway. It's just, you could talk nice and easy. And take your eyes off the road. Right, yeah, and, and just kind of project your voice back there, so that's cool. Very cool. Try out some spurt spurt mode. Andrea, oh, oh, never mind, hold on. You can go ahead and wait until I Oh, okay. Uh, Andreas, if you still want to know why the Broncos are stored there, let us know. We did talk about it a little bit earlier. There's just a shortage, and Ford's having trouble getting enough chips to 
finish the vehicles properly so they kind of wait there until the supply picks up. Yeah, there are a lot of empty lots around where we are, so there's a couple of them. The other impressive thing is the chassis in this car. You can hustle it. We're gonna um, send this Challenger to Gapplebee's here. And then you got paddle shifters. You can paddle shift down. exactly a rocket ship but I mean hey we're getting up to speed pretty good here and it's just a decent amount of weight in the steering it's pretty flat and these roads are wet today yeah yeah and there's a good amount of grip I mean it, it's it's a confident platform I'm really impressed by that they almost need to make like a an, an endline version <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, an end, yeah, sure. No, not an end line. Man. Dawson is asking if we'll ever do a live drive with a Bronco Sport, specifically an Outer Banks, or even do a normal review. Didn't we do that? We did do a review on a Bronco Sport. As for live drive, we'll try to get our hands on one again. I'd like to drive another Bronco Sport, but it might be a little while. Or it doesn't doll out a ton of press vehicles either. That's fair. I really enjoyed the Bronco Sport. Yeah, it was a, fun a lot car. of fun. I would get one over and escape. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I saw so you see so many of them now. Right. They're awesome. They're popular. Mm -hmm. I'll show you guys real quick the different gauge layouts as I shift drive modes. Camera here like that. Right now we are in comfort mode, and then Alyssa's going to switch over to that sport. You can see the gauges get all red and aggressive looking. And then the next is smart, so this will sort of adapt. If you drive the car aggressively, it'll go into sport mode on its own. If you drive it easy, it'll go into eco. After that, you have. Oh, I have to go all the way back because it's not a full. Ah, not a full dial, huh? And then that's eco. You can see it's a little bit green because you're being green for the planet. And then what's that one? Snow? That one's snow. Yep. Snow. So snow just kind of looks like normal. It'd be cool if they made it all frosty looking. But eco again? Yeah. Snow again. Fun animations. But yeah, it's a comfortable place to be. We'll get Nathan behind the wheel now and sort of see what he, what thoughts he has on the matter. But I just like how approachable everything is. There's no BS in this car. It's not like a lot of the vehicles we get in now that you have to kind of make excuses for. Like, oh, yeah, you know, it, once you get used to it, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's just like, you can just get in this car and, and it's just a nice place to be. That's very cool. Yeah. Cool. A little bit of a walk around. It isn't a perfect car. There are a few downsides such as there's not any USB type C's. There's also no wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. A little bit older in the technology department, but a lot of good things going on with it as well. I would get one of the a little bit more fun colors. This color is a little boring, but they make a really pretty burgundy. I think they offer it in green as well, so that would be cool. Mm -hmm. When you back up, does it make beeping sounds? I believe so. Oh wait, you mean like from the outside? Yeah. No. Nope, that's only hybrids. What do y'all think of the design? I think the back looks really good. I think the front's kind of like it or not. I mean, like, I could see how some people wouldn't be a huge fan of it. That's fair. Exhaust pips, tips are kind of cool, and they're real. Should huh. Nathan give some revs? Um, no. Nathan, Nathan, no. There's a, there's a guy right over there. Yeah, I was gonna say no. Oh. <laughs> we'll do that later. You won't want to scare the man in his Cadillac. He might have a heart attack. <laughs> right. I figured since you would back there, give it a rep. Yeah, well, Alyssa had just said, I should just we... Said it. I thought you heard me. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear anything. Wow. You turn... Oh, really? That's good. Interestingly, you can lock the center diff in this car, too. I find that interesting. 
don't know who's gonna take their calligraphy palisade off-roading, but you did. I did. <laughs> I didn't need to lock the center diff though. Oh yeah, that's another feature this car has. When Nathan turns his right blinker on, you can see the blind spot monitor comes up. I love there. that so much. Yeah, I think that's a nifty feature as well. Audi fanboy says hi. Oh, hello, Audi fanboy. What are hey. your What are your thoughts on the uh, Palisade? Being an Audi fanboy after all. <laughs> Andreas says he's waiting on a 22 Civic Si Canadian model. Ooh, get the heated can't seats. Wait to hit the lake roads. That's a great one. Congratulations. Nathan Salazar wants to know what your favorite car is. <sighs> My favorite car. Lamborghini Murcielago. I thought the 911 was your favorite. Ooh, well, my favorite I've ever driven is a 911 GT3. Okay. But I imagine if I drove a manual Murcielago, I would probably like that more. Gator 66 enjoyed your conversation about the ambient lighting. Good. Port Guy Videos wants you to review a Telluride. Uh, I think we have. We've done a Telluride. I don't know. You haven't driven one? Um, I don't know. I thought we had one within the last. But it's possible. Yeah. I definitely probably haven't. Yeah, maybe it was before you were around. It's possible, but you've done so many cars now, you're forgetting what you've already done. Yeah, I mean, I know I've driven one. I just can't. I, I'm fairly certain we had one, and I and I reviewed it. Okay. So take a look with the search function for a guy. Uh, Nathan wants to know if the seats massage. They do not, surprisingly. Dawson says the taillights remind him of the Ford Explorer taillights. Yes, I do see some Ford Explorer resemblance in there as well. There's a pilot right there, a little comp competitive model. I also like oh, how they. Oh, it was an SHO with silver wheels, just like mine. That's not common. Huh? I also like how they didn't pipe in a bunch of BS sound into this car. It's a very honest sound to the engine. It still sounds good. It just doesn't sound obnoxious. What do you think about the new Lexus LX 600? I think it's neat. Can't wait to drive one. <laughs> it's gonna have a great sound system, I'm sure of a refresh because, uh, sorry, LX. I assume he's talking about LX. LX. Yeah. The LX was in dire need of a refresh, so I'm glad they, they did that. Yeah. Africa. The Murana does not hold gears, unfortunately, but I think for this sort of driver and clientele, it makes sense because you don't want your kids getting up, st upset stomachs when you're bouncing off the rev limiter. Upset stomachs? Yeah. You really think your kids are going to get upset stomachs from bouncing off the rev limiter? In your Palisade? <laughs> you, I'm saying your kids specifically someday, they're probably oh, going to be used to it. Yeah, no, but like <laughs> your, your average everyday Palisade kid. Probably. Okay. Gadrew says he thinks the ambient lighting looks great, but of the two, they would choose the Telluride. But he likes the Palisades interior. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that people would want to pick the Telluride. The Telluride's very, very nice. Mm -hmm. I just kind of prefer Kia, uh, Hyundai over Kia. Ford guy is interested about the safety. Can we show some of those off? <laughs> yeah, Nathan, go ahead and crash. <laughs> um, you've got parking beepers. You've got automatic emergency braking. Um, adaptive cruise control. Active lane keeping. It's got safety features. It's got safety features. Much safe. How is the comfort up there? I'm comfortable. Shit. Here. Are you comfortable? Yeah, the seat's comfortable. Um, let's get back into comfort mode. Um, the ride is a little bit... It's not as smooth as I'd prefer it to be. I feel like it could be a lot smoother. Just like the more of like the... The, there's a bit more intrusion than I would like. 
Yeah. But the smaller stuff. Like it could be a little floatier. Yeah. But the chassis is very confidence inspiring. Yeah, you take the highway route. Right the highway. Does traction control turn off? Yes, you can fully defeat traction and stability control. Okay. Something I appreciate Hyundai for doing. Ford guy wants you to do that. Okay, Nathan, it's all the way over on the left. Hold that button. You see, first it says traction control disabled, and then traction and stability control disabled. Hey, Maran. Hello, sorry I'm late. I was riding my e-bike. Totally forgot about the stream. Hey. That's kind of cute. What kind of e-bike do you have? <laughs> also, uh, do you have any interest in Ducati's um, bicycle that they make? It's like... Bicycle? Yeah, Ducati makes a bicycle. Ducati. Yeah, Ducati. Ducati. That's how you pronounce it. Ducati. Ford guy also wants Nathan to get a speeding ticket. Why? Oh. Why do you guys want me to suffer? <laughs> if you can donate five hundred dollars, Nathan will get a speeding ticket. Just enough to pay it, yep. pay it off. No, more than that, because there's got to be a tip too. Labor. <laughs> Labor. This well, F it'll pay for off the record. So there this, you go. This F one fifty is being an F one. Oh, he, he was for a minute until he accelerated. Uh, he was being very close. Though. He was being an F one fifty driver. <laughs> I was driving around today in our tiny little Maverick, and there was a giant lifted truck huge thing big old wheels new sparkly shiny and the driver was eyeing our truck and it made me feel so cool nice yep speaking of that we should probably wash our truck yeah it's filthy it. although I, it was raining today so it kind of did get washed yeah but i want to wash the underside kind of clean off some of the salt build yeah. up even though it'll all just get there again soon i washed the taurus today nice. so i can get all the salt up off of it so i can not drive it until we fix the darn roads <laughs> It won't happen until Never. August. <laughs> Dawson says, "When the Hyundai, when is the, uh, when the Hyundai Kona N is available, will you guys live drive it?" Yes, hundred percent. That car is yeah. gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, you actually went out somewhere, California, right? And yep. saw them personally. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, we got a clean on ramp. Can we do in the wet? I'm thinking at least 50. Yep. It's up to speed, no problem. And then you go back into comfort and it settles right down. Yeah, I could see putting miles on this thing. But you're right, it, it, I think once you start talking about a $50,000 car, you're like, eh, it could be a little bit quieter in here and a little bit smoother. But when you consider that this is the top tier and uh, you could pick up a mid-range uh, Palisade for like 40, 35, 40, then you're talking about a really good bar. Yeah. yeah. So do you think you'd be able to withstand a brake test? Yes, I would be able to withstand a brake test. At some point, Nathan, do one because it's funny, this uh, sun, sunroof closes. <laughs> yeah. It does? Yeah. Jeez. Should I go back towards the airport? Should I have a list drive? Yeah, I'm going to go back toward the airport. We can do another walk around and maybe we can do some revs then and put a list behind the wheel. It's got a lot of 70. Show me the good stereo system. Here it is. Very good. I actually don't know how good. I haven't tested it yet. I have a little complaint. Okay. Quality complaint. Mm -hmm. Steering wheel is not aligned properly. Yeah. Uh -huh. If I go if I go go straight, it kind of goes off that way. How many miles are on this so far? Two thousand exactly. Literally exactly. <laughs> Maybe we can get to 2,022 miles today on Tuesday, 2-22-22. Don't you like the throttle tuning though? That's just like so in comfort mode, it's like it doesn't grab you at all. It's very progressive. A little bit. It's it's fine. Nothing I noticed. A lot better than that K5 though. 
Right. So Ford guy is asking for a brake test of 60 to 0. 60 to 0? Can manage that. Maybe around this corner. Get up to speed, get into a flat spot. Try not to scare these people too much. Also, I'll do it like that. <laughs> That's launch. so funny. Let's see if it'll open back up on a launch. I don't think it will. Ooh, a little bit of spin. Gator says check the cash app. Oh. Do what what's the budget for taking this off road? I don't Probably. Think it's on there. Uh I didn't put anything, but if we get up to twenty dollars donations, I'll do I'll take it off road. That'd be fun. Yeah. Use my boots a little bit. Cash App didn't notify me, I'm sorry. Cash App never notifies. Hey, thanks Gage, appreciate it. $5 in donations, that's $10 for um, Cash App, for double. I thought nice. there was a speed bump there, it's right oh, there. Well, they're not really even, <laughs> very minor. There's bumps on the road that are worse than that. I always wanted to drive a Taurus Limited. See what it's like. Mm -hmm. So we'll get Alyssa behind the wheel, do one more little bit, of, uh, kind of walk around before that, show you the exterior. Then Moran, let us know what type of e bike he has. Yes. It's a Cab Motorworks Recon with 72V volts, right? Yes. 63AH. Amp hours. Amp. Okay. And 20,000 watts? W? Nice. Yep. Uh, that's the motor. That's very powerful. It must yeah. be a lot of fun. So I wouldn't buy the e-bike. It doesn't have the range. And the recon. Um, he wanted this recon. Oh, wait. I'm curious. Uh, and you can, can get uh, 160 miles out of the recon. Wow. That's a lot. That's pretty yeah. neat. Is that what he said? Yeah, if you beat on it, you can still get 160. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's good. It shifts from reverse to drive and back and forth pretty quickly. Nice. Okay. I know there's some cars. Why did I turn it off? Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, a lot of cars, especially mainly newer Fords, that will not, like, you'll put them to reverse and there's such a long delay. Uh, here it is, the Palisade, as it had said on its little cook plate there. Some kind of classy brushed chrome look around it. It's not shiny chrome. It looks pretty good, I think. It's unique at least. It doesn't really look like anything else out on the market. Yeah. Now you can see without these lights on. Charlie, look, it's full LED. Oh yeah, thank system. you for telling me. Full LED system. It is kind of cool if they're all LED. <laughs> you want to be passenger seat or back seat, Nathan? Uh, back seat. Okay. Hand me the water, please, Liz. Sure. You can see Nathan as a five foot ten individual. Get him out of room back there. The, I am a bit disappointed there's no power steering column adjustment, but I guess yeah, I'm just a little bit. Can oh. Nathan show us his Taurus SHO? Someday we could probably do a live drive with that. Be neat. That would be pretty cool. I'm sure Nathan will be. I'm gonna put my window down with the screen. <laughs> it is a little disappointing. There's no button for me to be able to close this. Yeah, I oh, guess I probably oh. have to do it. Uh, William Long said, "Where am I supposed to hide my drugs, though? Uh, maybe down here. Maybe you'll just have to carve out a spot. Hyundai's aren't for drug dealers." And I can really see the ambient lighting back here. Uh, it's kind of, oh, it's really foggy. Will you guys do a Forte GT? We've been asking for a Forte GT for years and still haven't gotten one, so we're trying. 
Hey Charlie, what's up? Good to see you again. Hey JM, glad to have you on. Can you put Nathan in the third row? Eh, I don't know if Nathan wants to go all the way back there. I don't think it'd be really Won't benefit us in any way. <laughs> Such a trooper. I'll do it for you, whoever asked that. It was Ford guy, Ford oh. guys videos. Since Ford I guys videos Fords. been asking Nathan to do so much. <laughs> Give you a little camera action back there so you can show people what it's like. You could see my knees. Decent enough headroom. I feel like I'm still not. Leg room. Got cup holders too. You've already seen it back here. Oh, wait, do I have one of these? Oh, no, I don't. I'm trying, but it's stuck in there. Ah! That's okay. My knees are already up against the crash barrier. Nathan, would you like me to stop? No, you're good. There you go. Ah! <laughs> so Alyssa was pointing out that she's not particularly comfortable. I do not like this. And it's, it's neat for Alyssa to get behind the wheel of some of these cars because she's only five foot one. So sometimes she notices things about the way the car sits that we wouldn't notice. Yeah, super frustrating. So if I go, I'll put it in park. I know I can't park here, but it's room. I typically like, it's in park. Okay. I typically like to have the seat all the way up because I want to be able to see everything. Um, but doing that prevents a lot of like movement down here and it's super annoying when you're making big turns to like hit your leg, right? So then you raise this a little bit and then just a little bit more arm room. But then it actually cuts off from my eye line, which is right here, a decent part of the, of the uh, gauges right here, uh -huh. which is super frustrating. So I don't have a whole lot of arm length space to move when I'm making big turns. I'm hitting my legs. And I also can't really see all of the gauges right there. Interesting. So, and I'm, I, um, I actually need to fix that. I still feel like I don't have, I, I feel like I need to get closer to uh, the pedals. And I'm mm. already like so close to the pedals. So then what I do, is I lean back a lot because if the airbag explodes, my face is gone <laughs> because I have to get so close. And this is pushed in all the way already. Yeah. So I am so close to the steering wheel to the point where it's like uncomfortable for me. Got it. So. Got it. I got a hypnotization thing back here. Yeah, that is amazing how long that seatbelt goes. It's amazing how long it is. Yeah. Look at it. Moran said the 675 LT and 812 are getting wrapped. The 675 is midnight purple and the 812 is emerald green. Those will look really cool. Are you going to put them up on the channel, Moran? So it could be, be cool to see them, or at least to your Instagram or something. Also, Ford Guys videos said, does Palisade have rear wheel drive mode? I don't believe so. I think it's pretty much always a four wheel drive, all wheel drive. And can you drift it? Yeah, I, I think you could get a four wheel drift going, but it would have to be in like in the snow. I don't think you could do it on, on asphalt. Yeah. Those are nice. Yeah, all the switch gear is really nice in here. Good feel to everything. Like I said, I, I appreciate how intuitive the layout of all of it is. A lot of buttons, but they all kind of make sense. They're all very straightforward. Right, big center console. Wireless device charging. I love this entire open space. Yeah. I like that it has some designation, but it's also very open. So it's like, if you want these for what it can be designated for, yeah. Yeah. But you are not required to. Like it's customizable almost. Right. Putting like the, the cup holders away and then having this whole space just open. I like that. Yeah. Neat. Well, we got about 10 more minutes or so. We're going to Alyssa drive a little bit more and kind of get her impressions on the car. And we're going to wrap things up. Next week, we have a 
Toyota Venza coming. And I don't know what our second vehicle is going to be yet, so stay tuned. But if it's something boring, then maybe we'll live drive uh, Nathan's car or something. Talk about boring. Yeah, we're stuck behind um, a big digger. A big what? Digger. How's third row life? Oh, wait, 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 sorry. How's third row life? Pretty good. Does, yeah. it, does it reciprocate? Yeah. I don't know, I don't think so. Can you hear my voice? No. If you can hear my voice, Can't really. select the ready button. Remember that from, it was like NWEA testing or M step? No, I do not. Well, not you. Oh. So, just my generation. My heel is not even able to rest on the floor because I would need to push my seat forward more in order for my heel to rest. So when I fully floor it, it is toes. It is only toes. No, huh. no heel toe. None of that. Interesting. And I do not like that. This is gonna send this Prius to Gaffleby's. Can you customize the gauge cluster? Yes, you can customize the middle section and kind of what you want it to display. And have you guys thought of doing the Ford Echo Sport? Yeah, what we'd want to do is we want to do a video where we get an Echo Sport from a dealer and Nathan can uh, evaluate it with his honest opinions and see how awful he thinks it actually is. I have no problem saying bad things about Ford. Yep. <laughs> Owning two Ford vehicles. Yep. Can we see the V6? Uh, maybe. We might pop the hood at the end if we remember, but it's pretty boring in there. It's just an engine. An engine. Yeah, Dawson. Uh, it was Christopher Brower who reviewed the Echo Sport from a dealer on Winding Road. Um, Ford is not promoting that car anymore because they're going to be killing it off. Because it's awful. <laughs> this is an interesting material here. It's just kind of like a a leatherish kind of blank brown leather. I'm surprised they didn't put some wood grain in there or something. It's not really a wood grainy type of car, I guess, so it's a little more of a futuristic look. What about the ride? Is it a nice ride? It's middle of the range. Once you start getting about $50,000 cars, it's a little mid, kind of middle of the road, but I think if you got more like a $40,000 Palisade, it'd, it'd be quite nice. Same with the road noise. It's not it isn't an outstanding vehicle necessarily. It just does a lot of things well. And that kind of results in a, a fairly positive and recommendable package. Like if you want the sportiest driving in this class, you get a CX-9. If you get, if you want to get like the best engine, you probably get the Honda. Um, if you want to get the most kind of luxurious feeling and reliable, you get the Highlander. But... This kind of provides a, a good package in all those for, for a decent price. Well, Long, kudos to Hyundai Kia for keeping the naturally aspirated V6. I agree. I hope they go the hybrid route with the 3.8 as opposed to Turbo 4. That would be cool to see this engine with a hybrid. I doubt we'll see it, but it would be cool. Rad. Yeah. I think it'd be awesome to have this on a hybrid. Yeah. Can you review a Lincoln Navigator? <coughs> Bless you. Bless, excuse me. And a Ford Expedition. Yeah, we haven't had an Expedition yet. We'll try to get one of those. Oh, yep, here we go. Classic person stopping at the roundabout when no cars are coming. Great. Ron, I'll put it on Instagram. YouTube is toxic, uh, <laughs> especially when you show high-end cars. Some even hate my Shelby only because it's not in it anymore. Rough. Sorry to hear that. Really, I wonder what they're gonna replace the Echo Sport with or even replace it with anything. The Puma. Yeah, it'd be what nice they if they- should have done in the first place. But because Ford is so stupid, they yeah. unfortunately uh at least from Nathan. <laughs> yeah, they should have they should bring the Puma over. Not sure if they will or not. Melissa, do you need to get this phone call? Uh, I'm not expecting one. You'll have to leave a message. Okay. So we got about five more minutes or so. We get heading back toward the garage after this one. I like yeah. loop, loop back yep. around. That's what I he had someone in his comments say that his stock 2018 Ford GT 10 speed can be all of his cars, especially the turbocharged GT 350. Wow. The GT, his twin turbo GT 350, the guy said he could beat with his stock Ford Mustang. Stock GT? 
Unless you meant, yeah, Moran, did you mean like a, a Ford GT or a Mustang GT? And Ford Guys Videos asks, can you turbocharge the Palisade? Uh, I don't know why you would. This engine is plenty good as it is. This is probably not the way that I would Hey, Joshua John, tuning in saying hello. Hello, Joshua John, glad to have you in for the last five minutes. Can you park the vehicle in the garage? No, because our signal would be trash. Oh, okay. Your garage. I thought they meant in general. Uh. I like a lot of the features about this car. I really like the way it drives. I like head-up displays, and I like when you have the blinkers on. It shows you your blind spot in the in the gauge here. I like how all of this this area is uh, displayed. All the space, the clear buttons, everything is. I'm having a really hard time getting used to feeling comfortable in the driver's seat. Uh -huh. I'm having a hard time with that. It's probably something I could grow into and get used to, but I, at the end of the day, there's so many other cars to choose from. At this price point, in this segment, why would I settle, you know? Right. So that's kind of where my thoughts are with this. It's got like everything but how I feel in the driver's seat just is super uncomfortable. So. Yeah, you can see everyone else, she's a little lower. So if you are a small sure you take a Palisade for a test drive before buying one. Right. Uh, Nathan, it was a Mustang GT. Oh, <laughs> I know. Kia Telluride versus Palisade, Joshua John asked. We've talked about it a bit earlier. I would pick the Palisade. I think the Kia looks a little bit better, but I like the interior and just the general drivability of the Palisade better. Nathan, which would you pick? Telluride. Alyssa? I haven't been in the Telluride in the driver's seat. I don't know. Okay. Can you review some of the vehicles in the garage since we noticed it? That's a good idea. Maybe one of these live drives, once the weather gets a little nicer, we can we can go to the garage and we can switch over to the Wi-Fi in there or something and then do a do a video showing off some of the cars in there. But Maybe next it's tough time right now. the weather is nice and you have got a really boring car. Yeah, something like that. Kendo972 is in, says hello. Thanks for being a member, Kendo, and hello to you. Can you make a video on the 2022 Toyota Tundra TRD off-road package, limited? Um, yeah, we'll probably have a Tundra in here before too long. All right, neat. Well, we're gonna get wrapping things up soon, so any last things you'd like to know or see, let us know. Cool. Yeah. Pretty, pretty overall good car. Hmm. Nice rainy day. The rain's picked up a little bit. I'm glad we got most of our outside sections done before the rain. Blind spot camera coming into action. I love that. It's so quiet in here right now. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's just enjoying the nice rainy day. Rainy day and it's decently quiet on the inside too. Yeah. It's so foggy out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where the, the warm air is hitting the cold snow. a few last minute questions here if you'd like but be sure to tune in next week we'll be here tuesday four o'clock doing either a toyota venza or something else probably something a little more interesting i feel like the venza is too boring we'd be like it's good and then that would be the end of the stream <laughs> can you get the palisade at forty thousand dollars brand new or used yes i'm pretty sure you could find that Is this good? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Mind grabbing the hot spot, putting it up on the dash? Let's get a good connection. All right. Last little rainy walk around. Gonna shut it down.
free Nathan here. You gonna shut the engine off, Liz? Can you shut the engine off, please? Cool. In April, I have to give the Model 3 back because the plaid is coming. Hey, I'm wrong. Glad you're finally getting your plaid. That'll be exciting. If you, uh, if you feel like donating your Model 3 to Daily Motor, we can, we can turn it into a, a rally car or something if you have any, any fun ideas for it. I have a buddy here in Detroit who wants to, to get a Model 3 for rallycross racing. Neat. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. Can you review a minivan? Yes, we've got a Toyota Sienna coming in a month or two. So that'll be nice. And we'll see you on the next one. I'll, I'll answer any last minute chats that come in, but we're going to wrap this up. Thanks to Nathan and Alyssa for tuning in. In fact, Nathan and Alyssa's shirts are kind of the colors that I would get a Palisade in. They make a nice red like that, maroonish. And they make kind of a green too. Sweet. And we'll see you on the next one. We're Charlie, Alyssa, and Nathan with Daily Motor. And as always, drive on. your phone is freaking out. Do you need to end that? Well, I, I want to check to see if there's any more comments. Oh.